<laughs> so, um, yeah, a couple of people have asked me uh, in the comments to the cult thing, you know, I don't know how you could put up with them anymore, and why do you, and we spend too much time with it, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've explained this before, but I'm going to explain it again. I mean, one, the, to me, you know, being online and find someone whose ideas you like, this isn't the same as going and making a friend. You know, that's not an intimate in real life thing. Now, it could become kind of intellectually intimate. To me, it's more modeled on a, on a colleague's relationship. Like two people in the same department might argue and write papers and books arguing with each other. Einstein and Bohr, you know, they worked together. They also had animosity. Some of the animosity seemed to get pretty genuine and real. It's hard to know where it was personal and where it wasn't. But one thing they did is when, you know, God doesn't play dice, don't tell God what to do, you know, they didn't let any of that interfere with the real argument, which went on over here with facts. You don't do something so rude as to interfere with that. Now, it's obvious that my interaction with Gary has a big unilateral aspect in the sense of, um, uh, you know, I'm taking this stream of insults, and it's just too much for me. It's like I know that someone like that isn't going to appreciate the allowance you're giving them, and they, and they don't have to. The way it works for me is that <clears throat> if you're going to do an uh, an imbalanced relationship, something I can't balance to, like let's just say you 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 call me, hey, you're a damn idiot. Well, that's I can call you a damn idiot. I don't have a qualm against that. But I'm not going to call you a child molester on some weird stringy uh, line set of metaphors, you know, that's just beyond. So then that's going to have to be unidirectional. Um, as I said, my experience is people that would do that in the first place aren't appreciative. They're not like, oh, I realize you've let me, you know, sometimes, but usually not. So why do it? Well, you know, because... <clears throat> It doesn't really matter. I just categorize, you know, this is someone saying something. It's not even their actual opinion. They're making it hyperbolic on purpose. It's a psychological thing. Basically, there's a lot of things like this that are in the range that, well, I wouldn't do it. But I can handle, in certain circumstances, someone doing it uh, unidirectionally because, you know, it, for example, it just means they've got an anxiety problem. They have Tourette's. They have some problem. They can't help it. Right? And yet it does decay a bit from their character, but possibly just in one area, like of a fruit, which if you were going to eat, you could cut that part out. It reflects on their character. And to me, that's enough. And other people go, well, no, but because look, or there's 10,000 subs, those people don't know the character. That's the other thing. It's like in terms of dissuading popularity. I think it's nuts that you guys think that two people are arguing and the audience is swayed towards a factual argument. When is that ever? You've seen that? What do you? You're just nuts to think that that's how it works. You know, they're swayed towards a whole host of colors and lights and sounds that create feelings, and they follow these feelings, and they don't even really know exactly what they're following a lot of the time. To me, the important part is that the both poles of a, of a two-way conversation that is, is both occurring and being witnessed like this are honest. It's how the people really feel. So that the people in the argument can be attracted to something that really represents something, you know, that's material to them. You know, and they're not just chasing some dream. You know, they're not just listening to some guy who talks about compassion but isn't com doesn't have compassion, fooling themselves. You know, they're talking about somebody that has an idea that when they go investigate, they will investigate more. Now, on the other hand, I kind of don't, these, you know, I, that's a secondary thing to me, obviously. The, the people that are, I'm really concerned about are taking part in the conversation. Eventually, these little orbiters have to start their own conversations. But basically, it sorts out, you know. Um, yeah, sometimes that could be a danger if it's a really dangerous philosophy, and I think generally really dangerous people are taking part in crimes and stuff earlier before it all gets together as a big movement. Well, let's say you did have a big movement or anti-natalism took over a majority of the people. What are they going to do? Pass a law? I mean, I can probably wait 300 years to deal with that um, eventuality. So to me, in the meantime, it's just like, hey, if, what I, I haven't watched Gary's recent videos. And as far as where did you call me? You've called me a child molester many times. And in Stickham you did again, and I said child abuser, 
and challenge you on that, and at thinking you'd probably say how objectively I was this even worse figurative accusation. And you did, and you have many times, and whatever, I don't care. You want to say you didn't do it, you know, you did, everybody knows. That's why it's not controversial. I just let you do it. I don't make a big whine about it a lot. But now, it's sort of, um, I don't want to watch a Gary video and all the insults and that stuff. I mean, I've already forgiven. This is anxiety disorder, for lack of a better word, or whatever. You know, it's just his attitude issue, his complex of handling his emotions. But I am not in the mood to deal with it. Because it's enough to give this unidirectional insults to me, to uh, not be thankful or acknowledge that you know the shit that, that someone else has to bear just to you know talk to you, and um, that's that's one thing. Um, but then if you're gonna get indignant about um, um, if you're gonna get indignant about. Uh, now, you know, I'm supposed to defend you. It's like blocking me because I comment in somebody's video. You are not only are you not defending me ever, but your little cult comes around and hassles me. And you're actually the one insulting me most of all. And then you have the gall to, to act like, well, it's a matter of decency and friendship. You know, you should object to this. Booba tube too as well. It's like, oh, this is very concerning. I know you're against this kind of thing. You call that bullying when your gang of monkeys is running around calling us molesters and stuff? It's not just me. It's not just proof that I made it. You do this all the time. So whatever. Watch any of your videos. So, um, yeah, I just think it's ridiculous. Because, yeah, there is a bond. And below the unidirectional thing, I know there is. I have, willing, I have willingly helped Gary clarify his positions attract people that are attracted to them and so on, but also reject people that then see what they really are. And he's done the same with me. That's what happens with long-term conversations. I appreciate that reality, but he doesn't. He thinks he hates me and stuff. I think he's confused about his feelings, but in the end it means, of course, I can't rely on some sort of decency. I would consider the decent thing to realize, oh, you're an asshole in this subject and I can't stand that. But to realize that there's other aspects of life, and if there's anything that makes it seem cultish, it's how uh, they will side with people that they would, in other circumstances, be at odds with because of other differences in their particular quirks and styles. Um, but they're going to side with that, you know, um, because it's the group. So it's not a cult, but yeah, there's group thing. But then again, I'm pretty biased against the kind of group think stuff, so I do see that forming. And really, in our language, we don't have much of a way to complain about it except for talking about cults because people are just yippee yippee about groups, and I feel accepted. Me, if I'm feeling down and I find a group and it's like, oh, I feel like I belong and I'm so accepted, that makes me like have a spiritual terror. I hate that. I, I'm individual. If anything, my thing is avoidant of other people. I like being alone. I don't like. When I, that warm fuzzy of soaking into a group, to me, that's like, that's like the warm fuzzy of dying of uh, hypothermia, you know, it's like, that's just the, just, oh, no, it's not a good feeling, it's more like the poison that tastes really good as it's going down, and you know it's poison, I mean, it's like, it's a hideous idea to me. So I'm very sensitive to it. Um... And uh, yeah, it's going on, and it's just an all-consuming thing. Uh, you see people getting consumed by it. A lot of them uh, can't really think straight after it, you know, um, in, in any respect. So, and uh, you know, you guys thinking, oh, you haven't been answered. Look, my self tomorrow is non-existent right now. So I that your argument, it wouldn't matter if you know you even, or certainly me, or we all killed me in my sleep because I can't deprive my non-existent self tomorrow and I'm not conscious when I'm asleep so you choose a non-dreaming moment or something you're totally unconscious then you see you guys don't understand uh, an argument ad absurdum where you argue something to because logic takes principles and so to judge the principles you sometimes just see how the logic using them works out and when you get to the a, therefore, B, C, um, if exists, X, then such that, therefore, uh, should kill everything on Earth. 
That's to absurdity, right? The, the therefore makes you go, ooh, so obviously something wrong in here. You know? It's like hearing your dog tell you to kill people. So no matter how convincing he is, you know, just discount that. 